Attention swimmers, please move over to the flag. <laughs> Must be Lara. Is that right? Today, Hoppo yes. is hosting Hoppo. a very special guest. Welcome to Bondi. Nine-year-old Lara has travelled from Queensland with her parents, Tanya and David, as well as brother Ruri. Her dream is to become a lifeguard for the day. Since 2017, Lara has been battling leukaemia. Childhood cancer happens at absolute warp speeds. There's a lot of really confronting surgeries. There's a lot of uh, really confronting procedures that hurt. And she would just talk through it. Oh, that's good. She managed her emotions really well. I'll come in and meet the guys. This is Lara. She knows more about here than we do. <laughs> During more than 800 days of cancer treatment, Lara often watched episodes of Bondi Rescue, dreaming that she might one day meet her heroes in real life. Hey guys, how are you? How's it going? Welcome. Does this look pretty familiar? Yes. Yeah, we good. Today, yeah. Lara's dream of being a lifeguard for the day is coming true. I've got a little shirt for you. First, a series of tests. We you know we're backpack and trippers. Yeah. We're about. Um, but it seems Lara knows a lot more than the lifeguards expected. Do you know we're on flat rockets? Yeah. Just out here. Wow. You could get a job here, definitely. <laughs> Don't mind some of the boys at work. Yeah. She passed the binocular test. Now Lara is ready to put on the blue shirt and do a patrol. Since you're a lifeguard now, you've got to do some lifeguard jobs around the beach. Lara's next skill is mastering the megaphone. Attention swimmers, please move over to the flag. <laughs> Finally, the most important test, spotting a rip. This is deep water, deep frog going back out. So all this water's coming in, it needs to go back out to sea. That's why a lot of people get in trouble, eh? Yeah. So it looks pretty safe. So it's really big, the boys, everyone gets out there on the rescue boards and tries yeah. to track big waves off there, it just breaks off the point. But it's too big to bring a patient in. Sometimes we've got to paddle out his little boat ramp just off the side there. We go up and uh, bring the patient on the boat ramp. Yeah. We might be going up into trouble, so you don't have to get wet. If early signs are any indication, Lara may actually become a professional lifeguard one day. If anyone did get into trouble, I would make the woods straight away. Would you? Yeah. Oh, you're a legend. It's been the ultimate Bondi experience for Lara, but perhaps the biggest impact of all has been on the lifeguards. Yeah. Let me show your hand. You're an amazing person. Hey, you might think we're brave because of the job we do, but you're one of the bravest people I've ever met. You're amazing. You know, people think we're brave going out rescuing people, but, you know, these young kids dealing with cancer, it's, um, you know, that's another level again of, of being brave. And I think they're, you know, going through all the chemo and the treatments that they've got to go through. It must be so traumatic and, and wanting to get outside as every kid does and you're sort of stuck inside. You know, I think that's what brave is. We have a new lifeguard on today. His name's John and he's from Cabramatta. Lifeguard Terry. Lifeguard Dino. Lifeguard Cobox. <laughs> he's got um, Asperger's syndrome, which is a form of autism. And, uh, you know, all the boys are really excited to have him here in Australia. <laughs> How are you, mate? John turned up, I think it was last autumn sometime, and then, um, you know, he just seemed to turn up every weekend, and yeah, we love him. <laughs> Bondi lifeguard shirt. And on the back? Lifeguard. Right on. So John's dream is to be a lifeguard. And a Bondi lifeguard hat. And today, we're hoping that comes true. Officially, honorary lifeguard for the day. Um, yes, thanks, lifeguard Terry. Uh, lifeguard whip hat. Yeah. Well, make sure when I'm out there on the jet ski, I uh, make sure there are no um, sharks around. I'll give him a ring. And I know he he's scared of the water. Uh, you know, today it was going to be hundreds of metres out on the back of the jet ski, and you could see the nerves, but also the excitement. And at the end of the day, he had a ball out there. What else do you want to do? Do you want to go really fast? Uh, uh, I'm, 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 no, I'm just, just go out there. I've got to say, he's a lovely guy and everything, but he, he was very distracted. Black and white bikini girl. Wayne, what's your name again? Clarissa. Clarissa. Uh, do you have a boyfriend? Uh, yeah. Oh, God. It was so fun go going on the lifeguard jet ski with lifeguard Tom. I want, and now I'm going to you know, go. 
Welcome back to the lifeguard tower. So you've got a pretty good story to tell your buddies back at Katarina High, haven't you? Yes. The day you were... I died. Oh, yeah, I'm Terry. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Oh, this is lifeguard Terry. Yeah. At the end of the day, his dad was stoked and John was stoked, so, you know, we were stoked to have him here and it was a pretty happy day. Um, we were wondering if we could give you this message in a bottle. It's a letter for my late husband and their dad. What have we got? <laughs> right, OK. Um, we've written this in memory of my son's daddy, my husband, Christopher Whelan, who died aged 31 years young. We've come from England in memory of him on a holiday of a lifetime, and today we came to Bondi Beach because he was such a huge fan of Bondi Rescue. He would watch it all the time, saying we'll go there one day. So here we are in memory of him. Uh, lo love you so much, Chris. Wish you were here with us in person. Love you, Lou, Joel and Elliot. It's just lovely to be here, because sort of watching it on the TV and okay. Chris would have it on repeat and, uh, oh, He's I want to go to Bondo. Huge fan of the show. Yeah. We sit there and watch it all the time, so... All right. well, we'll yeah. keep that in a safe place. You'll have to Thank come back down much. in a few yeah, years definitely. and say hello. What do you say, boys? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Don't forget to come back, OK? Definitely. All right. Yay, Teal, take it. Thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. Is that a quick photo with a voice? What are you jumping? Does. That's the beautiful thing about our job. All of a sudden, you have something like that, full of empathy and uh, human feeling. It's sad to think I grew up without a dad, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you got hit by a uh, taxi on a bike. Oh, my. Yeah. That's just made their day to know that the, the letter for Daddy is going to stay in the tower, <laughs> in the lifeguard tower. So, yeah, it's excellent. You wonder whether they will ever come back one day and have to keep it somewhere safe. Don't throw out ever. Brazilian surfer Derek Rabalo is blind. Come through. And we've got all the boys in here, so... Hello, guys. Jake. Jake. Roy, hey, Derek. Nice to meet you, mate. Hey, Derek. Nice yeah, to meet you. you too, Although blind since birth, he surfed all over the world, including pipeline in Hawaii. You guys all surf? Yeah, pretty much. There's like 35 lifeguards and probably three quarters of them surf. A couple little waves out there today. Yeah, I was um, about to ask that. How are the waves? Oh, there's a couple. It's two, two foot. Yeah, we're going to have fun for sure. Yeah. Let's do it. A bunch of off-duty lifeguards want to join Derek on his first surf at Bondi. I'm 100% sure that I will be very safe. Yeah. Yeah, for the first time in my life. <laughs> I'll not get <laughs> Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Surfing is one of the most difficult sports in the world to learn. No one is sure how blind man Derek is able to catch a wave. He was trying to explain to me how he can feel the water draining back and you know, so that he can feel the speed of the wave almost, and then also, you know, obviously he can hear it as well. Yeah, he just loves the water and he loves surfing and he never let it stop him, which is really cool. And to see him paddle out so relaxed and calm, it really gives a lot of meaning to how he just embraces life. That's yeah, that's really nice. That's yeah. real, brother. Sure. Good work. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Sure. I the did. Nice, huh? Yeah, the water is nice and warm, and the weather's perfect. Yeah. No blue bottles. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jerry, I give you credit. I tried to close my eyes and catch a wave, and right, mate, you, that was it was. Cool. I've got a new respect for you, mate. Yeah. Oh, Derek, it was lovely to meet you. Yeah, lovely Thanks. to meet you too. Lovely to catch a wave. Sure. That's Thanks, Derek. That was really good. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Yeah. No, mate. <laughs> On patrol in the south corner, Harry's is called to backpackers' rip. Welcome the boys down south. I'm sure you got it. It's just two in those backpackers. Once through the break, Harry's realises only one person needs assistance.
when I got out there, it was just one. And it was a little Irish man, a little leprechaun. And he couldn't believe where he was. And, you know, he was so grateful to see me. On holidays from Northern Ireland, 26-year-old Lee Patton has an interesting turn of phrase. That country, quite strong, eh? I was sh Yeah, once more, this time with the translation. That country, quite strong, eh? I was sh Really? I that man saved my ass, you know, not even joking. I couldn't breathe out there and none. Quite scary out there, eh? I was actually chatting to this Irishman and I couldn't understand a word he was saying. He was just speaking his own dialect out there. I can swim as well, like that's just crazy. I swear to God, I had a near death heart attack. Thought I was gone, you know. That's the first time in my life I thought I was going to die. Really? The water swear me. That's very scary. Thankful for the rescue, Lee wants to buy Harry's a drink. Please get a beer or something. No, we, we'll get a beer together. Please, please, no. No, no, I don't, no. Like every good Irishman, they want to have a beer to say thank you. As long as you're fine, no, nah, please. Fine. I had to say, no, I, I can't actually drink down while I'm working on the beach. So he gave me $20 for the bushfire appeal. Come in, legend. If language wasn't on Lee's side today, at least Lady Luck was. It looks like you got your four leaf clover, buddy. You're a legend, man. I'll never forget you, man. Promise you, man. I'm getting high there. <laughs> But sometimes they help out in the most unexpected ways. Wife's lost the wedding ring. Oh no. Ouch. She's devastated, so. Anyway, we're not gonna give up hope until we've swept the area. Saxon come to the tower and it's one of those man things you have a gut feeling when you know another man's in distress, but we don't really speak about it. You know, generally when a man's in distress, a lady's involved. So I knew I had to help him. Saxon and his wife Paula live in Bondi. Harry's thinks he may have the solution to their problem. Hello? This is Harry's here jewellery rescue from Bondi Rescue. How are you? We need you badly. They've always said it, a diamond's the lady's best friend, and <laughs> there's a reason for that, isn't there? In front of the North Bondi Surf Club, Harry's goes in search of a ring. But the first thing he finds is distraught wife, Paula. Paula's becoming quite disturbed, you know, thinking there's, there's no chance in hell now that we're going to find the ring. The number one priority is preserving human life, so it's watching people out in the water. But on this occasion, we had a lot of lifeguards on. These guys were my friends. They're VIP guests to me. I'll do anything I can to help them. She's devastated. Hopefully, we can find it and uh, we've got a happy wife. <laughs> I'm just glad that you're not crying that anymore. anymore. <laughs> I wanted to take her mind away from the stress and, and action was occurring. So I used stakeholders, I used all the nipper kids. Yeah. No, just did. Did. Just I also gave Saxon a broom to sweep the sand too. Real important. When there's trauma, you give people jobs to take their mind away from the trauma. After an hour of sifting, sweeping and searching, the amateur metal detectors make way for the real thing, jewellery rescue. Hello. How are you going? I'm Paula. Pleased to meet you, Paula Tiny. Hey, jewelry Tiny, rescue. thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, what was it made from? Gold, platinum, silver? It's white gold. All right, we'll have a look and we'll get it back for you. All going well. You know, Tony come down with all his equipment and it, it was pretty much state-of-the-art equipment. Space Age, I'm calling it, something from NASA. Off he went and he just did his job just like I do watching the water. Tony uses a high-end metal and plastic detector and quickly has a strike. Oh, you're rich. Oh. 10, 10 piece. Bit of a false alarm, but that goes with the territory. We had a false alarm. He's found a coin. You know, I think there might have been a little hope fading for Paula. Tony makes another strike. But this time, Paula isn't getting her hopes up so quickly. Oh, I see it! Mum's ring! Your ring! Yeah! Oh, you darling! Oh. Woo! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
The joy was just amazing. We were all so happy. And to get that ring back, it was really important. You know, that's 20 years of history between the both of them there being married. And that's so special in the modern day. So they're reunited with the diamond and it's a great story. Thank you so much. Oh, oh. I knew, didn't I tell you? Did. Have faith in me. Feeling really, really lucky. So learn from this, ladies. Let this be a lesson to us all. The mouths are babe. I'm so happy for my friends to, you know, for them to find the ring because it's made everyone happy. You know, it's not just about rescues and treating blue bottles, it's, it's about helping a friend out here. And we've done that. All's well that ends well.